Hey guys, this is Fred Rambanis. We're here in the fall, and uh, I'm actually practicing for a tournament we got at Grand Lake, but I'm not on Grand Lake. I'm actually at Lake Ulaga, and uh, the reason I'm here and not at Grand Lake practicing for a tournament is because it's actually off limits. So I have to find a lake that I can, you know, kind of get comfortable with all the weather changes here in the fall. You know, we just had that fall transition, and it's happening everywhere right now, where the lakes are starting to turn over, and the fish are starting to move shallow. Fish are starting to come from their deeper haunts up into their secondaries. I'm trying to figure out ways of catching fish here that I could probably carry over to Grand Lake. Um, it, it, I know it sounds weird that I'm doing this on another lake, but really this helps, and, and it's happened a lot. Where you know we have these these seven day to fourteen day to thirty day off limits, depending on which uh, tournament circuit we fish, and you can't necessarily go to that lake to fish, but you can go find another lake somewhere in the same vicinity, and you can go fish there all you want. So if you can figure out what the fish are doing on one lake, they might be doing the same thing. Um, at the lake you're going to. At least it gives you somewhere to start, you know. Um, you're not just going in blind and, and you don't know where where to begin. So it's always nice to just kind of get not only, you know, adapted to what's going on, uh, you know, at the lake you're fishing, but just in general and get back into that realm of catching fish. What I got tied on now is it's, it's one of my favorite crankbaits. It's called the I'm a Beast Hunter. And uh, it's a relatively unknown crankbait, which it's fine with me because I catch a lot of fish on it, but um, I got it in a perch pattern, and I'm kind of targeting these these main lake points going into the creeks. Um, and like I said, you know, it's fall time. The fish are starting to move back into the shallows. You know, the lakes are turning over. The oxygen, the, the, the bait, everything's going to the backs of the pockets. But those bigger fish seem to sometimes be the slower ones to move back. So you get a crankbait like this. This is actually a, a crankbait that typically you want to dive at 12 to 14 feet of water. And um, I'm turning around and I'm fishing this thing at three to six feet of water on these rocky points. And um, I'm not, it, it, this color is called Fred's Perch, but it really mimics like a, a crawfish. And, uh, you know, I, I think what happens this time of the year is these fish are coming in, they, they know they got to start feeding, um, you know, for the winter. So something like this that you can move slow in that shallow water, it's an easy source of protein, it's an easy meal for them to get. And the way I fish this crankbait, because I'm fishing a lot shallow, shallower than it's intended, you can tell by the bill how scraped up it is. Um, instead of just grinding it down to the rock, you're going to get hung up if you do that. I take it, I'll cast it to the, to the bank, I'll, I want to make contact to the rock, but then I just want to slowly sweep my rod and just kind of let it bounce and feel and tick. and It's just going to bonk across every piece of structure down there, and that's what's going to really trigger those fish to bite. And... Uh, we're going to give it a shot here. I like to fish it instead of necessarily throwing it on a fluorocarbon like I would offshore in the summertime. I'd throw it on 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon. I'll, I'll actually upgrade to 15 pound monofilament um, or copolymer. In this case, it's copolymer. It's P-line copolymer in the CXX clear. It allows that bait to get the buoyancy it needs. Uh, it really helps it from, from staying down. And you really want this bait to just kind of hit that cover and just kind of rock back up and just kind of boom. And as you're sweeping, it's going to kind of do this, and then you're going to let it float back. And, the, and on that float back, that's what gets those fish. They kind of they're following, and all of a sudden it pops back up, and they just attack it. And it's 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 purely an aggressive strike, a reaction, and an instinctive bite. So here we are. Um, I got it paired up on one of my signature eye rods. This is the uh, crank launcher uh, designed for crankbaits like this. I got it on Ardent Edge reel. Um, I actually got it on a high speed reel. It's a seven two to one. Uh, guys will prefer it on 5-2. I'm not really picky at this moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I just like to fish fast. So I tend to carry mostly 7.2 to 1 reels on my boat at all times. Let's see what we can do. Get a Limit Outdoors, sponsored by Rigid Industries, LED lighting, Seaguar, always the best, Legend Boats, Bills Marine, Muddy Outdoors, Brothers in Arms Game Calls, Hot Huntress Apparel, Lowrance, Find, Navigate, Dominate.